Hi, in this particular video we're going to be looking at completing the square. This is uh, considered to be kind of a top end type of topic and it's made even more difficult in this particular one because we've got this value of 3 here and also this value of 5 and we're going to end up having to use fractions. So I'm going to use the same technique that I've done in the previous videos um, but hopefully you'll be able to follow this through and I will take my time particularly explaining through how we're working with the fractions. Okay, so um, what I'll do then is I'm going to factorise these first two terms to the value of 3. And as I've done before, I'm just going to write a big square box, okay, square brackets, but this time um, x squared is okay, but I've got 5. Well, 5 divided by 3 I can write as 5 over 3x, okay. And that's going to be exactly the same. So I've done nothing here but other than factorise the first two terms of the value of 3. OK, so let's have a look then at actually completing the square. So what I've got then is, again, big brackets. And I'm going to write this as x plus. Now, I've got 5 over 3. And what we normally do with this term is halve it. OK, so essentially we've got 5 over 3 divided by by two. All right. Well, um, when you're working with fractions, one of the techniques we can do is we can um, multiply and flip. So rather than this being divided by two, which is the same as saying two over one, I can multiply it and flip it over the other side. So effectively, that will give me then five times one is five and three times two is six. So this becomes x plus five over six squared. OK, so let's have a look at multiplying out that and see what it actually looks like. OK, I'm going to do it down towards the bottom here and I'm going to have x plus 5 over 6 times x plus 5 over 6. OK, well, x times x is OK. And then I've got 5 over 6 plus 5 over 6. Well, that's going to give me... 10 over 6x. Okay, well, 10 over 6x is exactly the same as 5 over 3, because if I just divide those two top and bottom by 2, I get 5 over 3. So I'm absolutely fine with that, no problem. And don't forget, what we're trying to do is recreate those first two terms. Okay, the difficulty I've got is these final two fractions. So I multiply 5 over 6 times 5 over 6. What I actually get is plus 25 over 36. Okay, so what I have to do is minus that 25 over 36 here. Okay, and then I've got that plus 1 towards the end. OK, so, so far so good. Hopefully you're following this all right. Now it's a case then of just um, really tidying this up and putting it into the format that they want us to do. So the first two terms I'm not too worried about. I can leave that as it is, as I have done before. The problem comes is that I've got... Um, this minus 25 over 36 times 3. Well, minus 25 over 36 is the same. Uh, well, minus 25 times 3 is 75. So that becomes minus 75 over 36. OK, hope that's all right for you. So 3 times minus 25 is minus 75. OK. Right, the other thing then is I've got this plus 1. So rather than writing plus 1, I'm just going to make it a little bit easier on myself and I'm going to write plus 36 over 36, just because then it means it makes it easier for me to add these two fractions together. So I've got minus 75 over 36 plus 36 over 36. Well, 75 plus 36 is going to be minus 39. Minus 75 plus 36 is minus 39. Now, because they've got the same denominator, I can add them together. So I can write this now as 3 
x plus 5 over 6 squared, and that's minus 39 over 36. Okay, I hope that's all right for you, and you're following through how I'm working with these fractions. Um, you could try doing this as decimals, but uh, to be honest, I think it's probably a little bit easier to actually deal with fractions once you've got those techniques in place. I think the only thing that you might need to consider at the end is that it might be just useful. You can see here you can cancel this fraction down. So I can write that as 3 times x plus 5 over 6 squared. And rather than writing minus 39 over 36, I'm going to write that as minus 13 over 12. OK, other than that, that's pretty much it for this type of question. OK, so in the next uh, part of the video, we're actually looking then at taking this information and using it to solve. Now, this particular video is going to go on a little bit because then we've got the next part B, which is hence or otherwise solve the equation and give your answers in third form. Well, if that is the case, then we've done all of that work with um, completing the square, so we might as well use that. I guess you could use quadratic formula or something at this point because it says or otherwise, so you could if you wanted to, but uh, let's just carry on with using completing the square. So basically what we ended up with is x plus 5 over 6 squared minus 13 over 12. And now we've been told that's equal to zero. So don't forget that when we're doing these sorts of things, what we're doing is basically looking at a quadratic and then we're solving for this point here. That's exactly what they want us to do. OK, so what I'm going to do is find out a value of x, or more accurately, two values of x. OK, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this minus 13 over 12 and put it over here. So I'm going to write that as 3x plus 5 over 6 squared equals 13 over 12. OK, now, before I square root any of this because of this square, what I'm going to do is divide through by 3. So once again, we're dealing with fractions. We've got this 13 over 12 divided by 3, which is the same as saying 13 over 12 times 1 over 3. Well, that's going to equal 13 over 36. OK, hopefully that's all right for you. Please do have a look at some of the work on fractions if you're not sure. But it seems to be easier then just to get rid of this 3 by dividing both sides by 3. So if I divide both sides by 3, I lose those two and I get x plus 5 over 6 squared and that equals 13 over 36, which is what we've just worked out. OK, right. Now we're in a position where we can square root. So I'm going to square root both sides. If I square root both sides, I get x plus 5 over 6 on this side. On this side, um, I, can, I can write it really, if I wanted to, as square root 13 over 36. But I've noticed that actually 36 is a square number. So um, it just seems to be a bit easier for me to write this as root 13 over 6, particularly because I've got a 6 here as well. OK, now remember when you're square rooting, it's a plus or a minus value. So I can write that as plus or minus uh, root 13 over 6. OK, let's just then take this plus 5, 6 over to this side and I end up with x equals minus 5 over 6 plus or minus root 13 over 6. All right, it doesn't look particularly nice written like that, so all I would do is just pull those two uh, denominators together and write that as x equals minus 5 plus root 13 over 6, because both of them are over 6, or minus 5 minus root 13 
over 6. And that's the answer to this particular question. So what we've done then is taken the completing the square or completed square form, which is this one here, and then we've really manipulated it until we get to the point where we've got two values of x. One where it's minus 5 plus root 13 over 6 and the other is minus 5 minus root 13 over 6. OK, now this particular level you're looking at level 8, level 9, top GCSE, so it does take a little bit of time to work through. Um, I hope it's been useful to you. Please do uh, let me know in the comments if you're not sure about anything. I always come back to you and I'll look forward to seeing you inside the next video.